Welcome to this GCSE RS component one theme, issues of life and death uh, revision video. So we'll just go through, first of all, the keywords in the first of our four or five videos about this topic. And with each topic, there are some uh, topic tests. There are quizlets you can do to learn the vocabulary and the quotations. Please make use of all of those on the website, on the quizlets, and uh, then practice some questions. So onto our keywords uh, in issues of life and death. First of all, afterlife, life after death. Our existence continues after a physical death. Environmental sustainability demands our natural resources can be met without reducing others' ability to live well now and in the future. Euthanasia, meaning easy death or mercy killing for someone who has suffered a painful death or a serious illness. Evolution, a process by which all living creatures develop from earlier forms of life during the history of the earth. Abortion, the deliberate ending of a pregnancy so that it does not result in the birth of a child. Quality of life, the extent to which life is pleasurable or meaningful. Sanctity of life, the belief that all life is precious and sacred. Some people believe that only human life holds this special status. And lastly, soul, the spiritual aspect of a being which connects someone with God. The soul is the non-physical self and can live on in the afterlife. So these are the questions uh, that might come up as two mark questions uh, that you should really, really learn. So on to issue uh, one in our topic, end of life issues. And this looks at the universe, the origins of the entire universe and issues related to that. Some Christians are literal Christians. They believe the Bible should be understood word for word. Here's someone, I am a, I am a creationist. I believe the creation of the world happened exactly as it described in the Bible. Other Christians are liberal or non-literalist. People should, and they would say people should be free to understand the Bible in whatever way they choose. For me, some stories should be understood more like metaphors or symbolic stories. They are still true because the stories carry meaning, even if they don't refer to actual historical events. So you need to know about Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. What's in them and how are they interpreted by literal and non-literal Christians? Genesis 1 is the story of God creating the world. In six days, remember the the prayers. Here, yeah, there's a there's a headline. A, a, the first couple of verses are like the title of the passage. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth is out form and void, and the spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. And then you have this, and God create yeah, this God created day by day. God created the light and the dark. Day one, God created the. Uh, the sea and the sky, day two. God created the land and the plants, day three. God created the uh, greater and the lesser lights. God created the fish and the birds. God created the humans and animals on day six. And then God rests on day seven. Humans are therefore the peak of God's, the end of God's creative act, uh, made in his image. Male and female, he made them. All these, these pairs end up with a final pair. Male and female, he makes them. And he gives them a unique status as God's stewards on the earth. And it says in, towards the end of Genesis 1 that we are made in his image. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. That's verse 1. In verse 26, it says, let us, and God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, male and female. He made them. So that's Genesis 1. It's the story of creation that you've you well, well understand. But Genesis 2 is also a story of creation. Notice that in it begins with God creating Adam and not the animals. The animals kind of come along later on. They're brought to Adam to be named. But God, the action goes straight from creating the world to creating Adam, placing him in a garden to live in a place of paradise with a responsibility to look after it as a good steward. Adam is made... Then another thing to notice, from the dust of the ground and the breath of God, symbolizing the human soul, making him a son of the earth and also a child of God. 
What is it that makes us different? We have us. We are a soul that inhabits a body. Christians would say. And that's not the end of that passage. Genesis 2 also includes the story of Adam's partner, uh, the companion. God found no adequate companion amongst the animals, so he puts Adam in a deep sleep, does a bit of surgery, and then he takes and, and creates Eve from his rib. And Adam wakes up and he, he bursts into song. This is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. Now, ah, is it all a piece of poetry, all a song? Is that or is it, should it be read literally? Well, different Christians have different views. Um, and the key word here is creationism, the belief that God created the world. Well, all Christians are creationists because all Christians believe in the doctrine of creation. Pretty, pretty strange kind of Christian. You didn't believe God created the world in some way. But what way is the question? Well, some Christians are, are creationists. Uh, most extreme kind, I guess, the fundamentalist Christians are young earth creationists. They would say the world was created by God in seven, th in seven days. That happened some 10,000 years ago. Famously, Bishop uh, Unger said it was October the 23rd, 4004 BC. Really? Really? Other Christians, and, and this is, has always been the case, there's always been, long before Darwin, long before the Big Bang, there's always been Christians who were creationists and always been Christians who were old earth creationists. Um, Augustine was one of these. He, you know, he said God created the world for a long period of time. So Augustine and others believe in an old earth creationism that God unfolded and created over a long period of time. God must have created the world, but creation took place millions of years ago. Uh, there was a seven days of creation might refer to periods of time. Each day, the word day is the word yom, and yom can refer to a period of time, not just 24-hour periods. Um, there are lots of theories out there on this. The day was long, or the, the gap between the days was quite long, gap age, day age theory, and so on. Generally, the Catholic Church believes the Bible is inspired, whereas creationists tend to talk about, uh, who are typically fundamentalist or evangelical, to, who are, believe the Bible is the inspired word of God. It's God-breathed, meaning it's kind of inerrant for them, without mistake, and can be read literally. It directly comes from the mouth of God, and every word is true and accurate, whether it's science or history it's talking about. As the Roman Catholic Church talks about the Bible as being the inspired, the Catechism says that God inspired the holy prophets of old. It's unlike any other piece of human writing, but it is a piece of human writing that needs interpretation. Catholic Church says, and it offers its services to help you interpret it. So one of the key questions we'll think about in this topic is, is was the world designed? Well, of course, no surprise, Christians and atheists disagree in this. And there are lots of arguments involved in this. We'll look at some detail in a second. But um, the beauty of the world, the sheer superfluous, extravagant beauty that you find from sunsets to dolphins to whatever you choose, of its well-ordered uh, nature it gives us strong evidence, its ecosystems and everything else of a, of a creator God, a gardener of the world, as it were. Not only that, as we look at our human frame, as we look at our uh, the way we're made, our, our, the, the heart within us, the eyes we see through, the sheer complexity of life, these things, this suggests a divine mind who's the, the creator of this complexity. And this leads for some people to a design, an intelligent designer, uh, and an argument for intelligent designer, so that such things cannot have come about by accident, by random uh, chance evolution. Um, they must have, they cannot have come out by chance. They must have an intelligent designer. One of the early uh, thinkers was a guy called William Paley. Uh, William Paley used the example of the human eye. Uh, the human eye for him was perfectly formed to enable him to see um, it like a lens in a camera. It cannot have come about by chance. All the bits had to be put together just so for it all to work together. Therefore, it must have been designed. Well, in contrast, atheists, no surprise, and humans don't agree. Life might look like it's designed, the human eye might look like it's been, it's an evidence of complexity, but we can make a theory of how it evolved in, in, in from simple stages to something complex. 
Perhaps Richard Dawkins says a light sensitive pimple on a fish gave it a selection advantage and uh, adaptation advantage over other uh, creatures in the water. And so it kind of passed on as genetics. Uh, Richard Dawkins who argues this in his book, The uh, Blind Watchmaker, Blind Watchmaker. So the world he thinks might appear to be designed, but it's only appearance of design. Uh, it can all be explained. That's quite a big claim. All be explained by Darwinian natural selection, or at least his theory, his version of Darwinism. As we look at the whole universe, there are some important things to understand um, that divides theists and, and atheists. Um, great atheist or humanist uh, belief, or like. David Hume and others believe that the universe, the physical material universe was past eternal. And recently that has been a problem for atheists because a Catholic, a Roman Catholic uh, father, a uh, ca priest called George Lumetta suggests the universe, actually there's evidence from science the universe began to exist. And in 1923 published his Big Bang Theory. And it's a very religious theory, the Big Bang, you might be surprised to learn. Lemaitre proposed that, therefore, there was no conflict between religion and science. He says that evolution, the evolution of the world, can be compared to the display of fireworks that has just ended. Some few red wisps and ashes and smoke standing on a well-chilled cinder. We see the slow fading suns and we try to recall the vanished brilliance of the origins of the world. He's referring to what he calls the primeval atom, the very first moment, the singularity that was birthed the rest of the universe. The materialists have typically rejected his theory. He's, the very word Big Bang was written by an atheist called Fred Hoyle who said, ah, you're a Big Bang theory, Lemaitre, it's rubbish. I've got a better theory, his steady state theory. Steady state theory is that there's an equilibrium because magic stuff appears in a magic place and keeps the, the universe in a state of um, st steadiness, okay? Um, other theories came along, the oscillating universe model, Big Bang, Big Crunch, um, Vacuum fluctuation models um, uh, were brought about by this guy here on the left, Stephen Hawking. He's had a number of theories about cosmology. Uh, he's written about in his books, The Brief History of Time and The Grand Design. His own beliefs have changed over the years. Um, and it's unclear, actually, if he was an atheist or an agnostic or what exactly he was. But his last book, The Grand Design with uh, Melodinov, does appear to be written from the perspective of an atheist. And he says in it, given a law of gravity, the universe can and will create itself. Now, I wonder about that. What do you think? Can you think of anything that has created itself other than the universe? Is it possible that my, my pen could create itself or my phone or anything? What do you think? Now, do science and religion, therefore, oppose each other? Well... There's a question. Some agree. Both atheists and like Richard Dawkins and fundamental literalist Christians agree they oppose each other. They're in a war. Um, the Bible contradicts science and science contradicts the Bible. The Bible is God's truth revealed through Holy Scripture for all time. Atheists say science gives us actual picture of the world, whereas religion tells us nothing. The world may appear to have all been designed, but it's an illusion. So do science and religion oppose each other? Well, others say no, there's no real conflict. Science maybe gives us the how questions, religion gives us the why questions. This is certainly the view of Albert Einstein. The more I study science, the more I believe in God. The fact of evolution of the Big Bang cannot prove that God did not cause the first reaction or inspire the first development. Now that might be something more, that might be progressive creationism, God using the process of evolution, but occasionally doing stuff to add to the process. So we might have a complementary view, we might have a coexist view between the ways religion and science work together. In terms of the argument from design, there's many things that can be uh, referred to. The fine tuning of the universe, interestingly, is something that atheists argue for. Uh, it's called the anthropic principle in science. Uh, here's Stephen Hawking, the remarkable fact that the values of these numbers seem have been very finely adjusted to make possible the development of life. A life-permitting universe requires it to be very carefully constructed. Gravity has to be not too strong or not too weak. 
and a whole range of other forces, not just a few like the electromagnetic uh, levels or strong and weak nuclear force, but we find hundreds of these constants and quantities, all of which have to be finely tuned. How do we explain these things? They're finely tuned. They are, well, we could say it's, it's necessarily so, but is it? What we could easily think of many other possibilities. Uh, the universe just might not exist, for example. So it's not clear that the universe is necessary. Could it be by chance? But the, the improbability of all of these uh, factors coming together is vanishingly small. Perhaps uh, 1 to the power of 10 to the power of 123 zeros. Take all the molecules and particles in the universe and multiply it by the seconds that have passed, and you still get a number that's much less. 1 to the power of 10 to the power of 80. So is it by chance or is it by design. Another piece of evidence that's used for design is irreducible complexity. You're Michael Behe. He's happy with many aspects of evolution, but he thinks it isn't as powerful as people like uh, Dawkins in his book, uh, The Blind Watchmaker, suggest. Um, he says a single system which is composed of several interacting parts that contribute to the basic function where the removal of any one of these parts causes the system to effectively stop functioning to, to describe what he calls irreducible complexity. There are if systems that, if they have evolved, the question is how? Because all of their parts had to be in place for them to survive and pass on their information to the next generation. Um, he gives examples of the bacteria flagellum, which any one of the parts, it looks like an outboard motor, and any one of these parts didn't exist, the, the organism wouldn't exist. So liberal Christians have different attitudes to the way we think about things. Uh, science, perhaps, Poltenhorn Hinn says, ha asks how questions, religion asks why. R uh, Genesis gives us a, sh a short technical answer. No, it doesn't. It gives us uh, the big answers to how that things exist because of God's will. And one can perfectly well believe in the Big Bang, but believe it is, as the will of the Creator. On the other hand, Here's someone, uh, R.F. Tennant, he talks about the aesthetic argument, that life is saturated with beauty, and therefore on a telescopic and microscopic scale, our scientific knowledge brings us no nearer to understanding the beauty of nature. From an intelligibility point of view, beauty seems superfluous and to be of little value. And actually, long before scientists discovered the anthropic principle, this guy, R.F. Tennant, also argued that life is just too improbable. Imagine a rolling a dice and getting a six, and then rolling it again, getting a six, and rolling it a million times and getting a six each time. It's too improbable uh, in the way it is to think that it's just there by chance. Stop the video, have a go at the topic test, have a go at the keywords, making notes of those, uh, learn some of the vocabulary of the Quizlets, and so on.